Well, hey, good Wednesday afternoon. It is another episode, another week, another whatever of an Apex Insurance Group webinar, and we are darn glad to have you along. Hey, coming up today, we're going to be talking about why it's important to get here early. Actually, what we're really going to be talking about is time management and getting your ducks in a row. You know, we're already into the third month of the year, and if your production is not where you want it to be, shame, 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 shame on you. And, uh, you know, I just heard that song. It was a 70s, 80s kind of hit, and actually they call those things oldies now, and I guess that makes me an oldies. But getting here early will actually give you an extra 15 minutes of the good stuff. That's like taking the top shelf of an alcohol drink and just uh, kind of infusing it. It's some of our commercials, it's a basic agent or two, a video blog, something along those lines that will allow you the opportunity to learn more and put you just that much farther ahead than another agent. Remember that Michael Jordan wasn't really, um, he didn't put in hours and hours and hours of additional training each week. He just put in a little bit more. Just that little bit extra allowed him to be extraordinary. So we invite you to be extraordinary by getting here 15 minutes early on, on our weekly webcasts, and it will be mighty, mighty helpful for you. So let's take a look here. There's five pointers that we offer in success. And if you apply each and every one of these pointers, it's this is like a, 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 a magnified synopsis of what we're going to be talking about throughout this uh, webcast today. One thing is set up distraction-free areas. Another is customize your daily rituals. Also block time out so there won't be distractions. Share your intentions with others so you can have an accountability partner and also schedule your downtime. So <clears throat> have you ever wondered, I wonder this all the time, why are some people rich and others are not? Everybody in this list right here has the same 168 hours in a week. And are they that much more incredibly great in managing their time than this, say, this guy right here on the screen? I don't really know. What are they doing differently or what do they have to do? What are they doing differently? Uh, and, and as I look here, I don't see um, Sir uh, Branson on there. I know that Branson... Uh, will actually do his thinking in a hammock. Now, some of these other guys here, Warren Buffett, I have no idea, you know, how these guys uh, spend their time, but they are some of the richest folks in, an air, uh, in, in the world. I don't necessarily want to be rich. I just want to utilize the time that I have at the most efficient level as possible. Also, have you ever wondered why some people are just plain old messy people and others are just neat. Now take a look at it. You know people. You know people when you walk into their house, they've got stuff thrown everywhere and then they constantly run around. Where did I put this? Where? I, how come I can't find my coat? Where are my shoes? Well, they could be one of six different places in your house and oh, here's one, but most folks have two feet and I don't know where the other one is. But anyway, why are some people messy and others are not? Now, I'm just posing the questions for people to answer. Why are some people so ineffective and others are not? Now, that's one that we really want to sit and think on in today's webinar. Why people are ineffective, or let's just flip it around, how can we actually be more effective with the time? I don't really care about the ineffective people. They're of no real consequence because they're not really that effective. But I do very much care about the people who are effective, who are effective. I want to become more like them each and every day. Because after all, you need to think. You need to be create. You need to work, and in all of that is your effectiveness. So we're going to take a look very briefly. Today is actually a very short webcast, 
it's really kind of funny. I, I listened to a couple of YouTube channels over the last couple of days, and one of the young men that was on it, a young guy, made me sick because it appeared that he was about 30 years younger than me. Yeah, about 30 years younger. And uh, he didn't have a problem uh, saying, hey, my time's important, and I don't like to have my time wasted by people. Well, good for him for saying that. If we would only adopt that and spend time with those that really help us to achieve our uh, us to achieve our goals and help other people to achieve their goals, then we could be uh, we could quit wasting everybody's time. You know, if you have to sit around and waste ten minutes a day with ten people, that's nearly wasting two hours out of a productive workday. And if every particular hour that goes by in a workday, you lose effectiveness just because you get tired. Well, my my, oh my. So pretty soon by the end of the day, you're about darn near useless. I don't know about y'all, but I am. I certainly am. So let's talk about creating a distraction-free area. Well, how do we do that? You know, some people, um, right here, here's the two biggest distractions in the universe. Emails and your cell phone, social media. And I have literally seen people get up off whatever the couch, get up from their desk, move over to where their phone is out of their purse and go check their social media or go and check emails without regard to the fact that they might be in a meeting. I've seen actually people get up from a meeting to go take a personal phone call that is not necessarily an important phone call. It's just a routine phone call. Hey, folks, when you get ready to come to work and you set aside, since we're all working pretty much, uh, you know, wherever we choose to work, whether it's in a brick and mortar or whether it's in our living room or, or wherever it is, turn the social media off and do not open up the email. Plain and simple. Take those distractions off the table and focus on the work. After all, eliminate the time wasters. I mean, I wish I knew how much time that some folks actually spent. It's, it's not uncommon to have teenagers sending out 10,000 texts in a week. 10,000. No wonder they don't have time to learn. But the fact of the matter is, how much are we wasting our time? If you can actually get 80% of your work done in the first 20% of your day, you're going to be actually ahead of the crowd. I'm not here to toot my own horn, but I make it no secret to a lot of folks that I get in the, into work generally between 4.30 and 5, six days a week. Now, why am I able to do that? Well, aside from the fact that I'm old and I got to get up and go to the bathroom when I get up that, you know, in the middle of the night. But besides that, I'm able to get done with a hellacious amount of work, mostly before anybody gets up along with me and gets into and uh, start making phone calls. I can get more work done in those first four hours from about 5 o'clock until 9 o'clock than the work I'll get done from 2 o'clock in the, well, 10 o'clock in the morning until about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Because I, phone calls are not necessarily uh, constructive efforts for me. A lot of times agents are calling me and we're talking about uh, just different things. Sometimes it's just a giant bitch moan and complain session. And those are times that are not necessarily straight up income generators. What they are is creating relationships, and that is tremendously important. But by gosh, get done with 80% of your work in the first 20% of your time. Check mail only at selected times. I know one person from one of our IMOs that will only check their email between 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That means that the whole day will go by and they will collect all of their emails throughout that day and they will answer them in the afternoon. So if you have something that is truly important, give them a call. Okay, because he's not checking the email, he's not checking the texts until between 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So remember, those two things right there are definitely time wasters. Time wasters, folks. Next, 
Make a routine of your days. Develop both weekly and morning routines. I say morning routines because very infrequently do people ramp up their energy level as the day goes along. In other words, they come into the work, they're tired in the morning, and they're not awake yet. By the afternoon, they're just working twice as fast. That's not generally the way that things happen. Most folks have an overabundance of energy early in the morning, and they are willing to work harder for that. So, let's turn around and do this. No, let's turn around and do this. So, develop your routines. Develop your days. Have specific, in this world, have specific tasks. Okay, lay those out. If you have to have a planner, I wish I could show agents that every single day, I have a clipboard with just leftover paper from different reports that I run on one side of reports on the back. I put them on that clipboard and I write down the day, the date, and I write down the things that I both have to do and the things that I have achieved throughout the day. So if I've made a, a communication with an agent, if there is something I've got to do, like make a specific phone call to a customer, a client, or an, uh, a carrier, then I write that down. I write down the phone number. Uh, if I get any phone messages that come in and voicemails that are left, I'll collect them and write them down on this list. It is a running log throughout each and every day of the things that I have to do and the things that I have accomplished. So it's also a reflective item that on the Monday I can go back and do whatever I need to do on Mondays. And there are things that I specifically do only on Mondays. Next comes up Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, I have a morning meeting. It is something that is set in stone. I know what time it goes on and I am prepared for that meeting before it gets started. Okay, and it's with a select group of very important uh, agents at, uh, for that meeting. And what we do is we discuss things. And unfortunately, a lot of times that meeting is a one-way conversation. Why? I don't know. Maybe the, maybe agents just have uh, don't uh, don't have any questions. But repetitively, it's a supposed to be a two-way street for agents to ask questions and receive answers or to share information. But Tuesday mornings have specific tasks. My Wednesdays are limited with certain things. I have specific Wednesday tasks. You may develop Wednesday tasks and Tuesday tasks. You may develop tasks that you do on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday and Thursday. They may include making phone calls. They may include going out and seeing particular clients. It may include handwriting letters. It may include... Uh, cleaning up um, a C your CRM and taking off tasks and moving people from the, um, uh, the the nurture into the dead area or bringing on new leads and putting them in and cleaning up emails. Whatever it is that you do, write those tasks down or develop routines. Specifically, by the time, honest to gosh, by the time my Thursday afternoon comes, I am already in weekend mode. So, about Thursday at 12 noon, you might as well not necessarily color me gone, but personally, I've already put in my 50 hours a week by about Wednesday. Now look, I don't need a pat on the back, but this is kind of my routine that I have worked for the last 30 years, and it's, it's just what I do. I don't expect other people to do those things. I don't even expect my wife to maintain my schedule, but I don't want anybody else to get in my way. So with that, uh, every single day of the week. I will tell you some of the best days to make uh, contact with people are Wednesdays. Wednesdays are prime day. They're known as hump days because people often, if you're trying to call prospects, Monday they're trying to recoup from the weekend and collect what they have to do throughout the week. And again, also by Friday, you might as well color them gone because their mind is far from anything that they want to do during the, uh, you know, they don't want to talk about business because they're in weekend mode. So stop and you think about that. Make sure that you structure your weeks. Get rid of those things that are non-productive and put those in non-productive time. Again, don't do the non-productive things at 8 a.m. in the morning. Reserve those for the 3 o'clock in the afternoon time frame. So let's move on to the next step. Block out time. Now, I found this out just recently in doing some research for this particular webinar. Blocking out time is so important. What you need to do is block out your time, and it is a great way to maximize your tasks. 
you know, um, <clears throat> what do they say that uh, you can always fill up a cup? Uh, you know, I can always block out a day with work. I, I'm making some bad examples here, but assign yourself that if you have to write three emails to customers, give yourself or prospects, give yourself uh, 15 minutes for each email and block out 45 minutes. Say from nine in the morning till 945, I'm going to knock out these emails. I'm going to error check them as well as I will run them through a grammar checking program to make sure that their intent and the grammar is checked right. Block out that level of time. Block out the fact that before noon, I intend to make 10 phone calls and I have one hour to do that. Now, oftentimes you may think, hey, I can make 20 phone calls in an hour. Well, you know, that's only if you're expecting not to get a hold of anybody. I expect to get a hold of people. I expect to have some interchange with people and discuss with them the things that are important to help close sales. And in my world, closing a sale means onboarding a new agent. So block out that time, schedule that time, and make sure that you live by that schedule. Okay? I, I, I said rather jokingly, and it was a joke, but the day that my dad died... I said, I wish my dad had given me two weeks notice because really it didn't fit into my schedule. Yeah, and it was pretty cold at the time that I said that, but now years down the road, if you understood who I was and, and what I do, I live by a schedule. Now, that doesn't make me a robot. That just try, I just try to be that a little bit more efficient. And a lot of people, they don't use calendars. They don't use schedules. And they, they basically will work throughout the day as to whatever the next task comes up. They, they work through it, and then they pick up the following task. That, too, is a method. And maybe that in and of itself is a schedule. But what ends up happening is sometimes they are not as uh, time maximizers as others if you would just block out the time. Further, make firm start and end times. In years past, I never set a shutdown time for my day. Just whenever my work got done, it was just something that was developed after years and years. And actually, when it really did start was when we officed out of the house and this started way back early in my insurance selling career where I had uh, one of our extra bedrooms was my office. I would work until the time that, that I got tired and went to bed. I didn't watch television. I just worked from the time I got up until the time I went to bed. And uh, I'm not recommending that. Certainly that impacted a lot of negative things that happened in my life. But map out those firm times. Say, hey, I'm going to work Monday through Saturday from uh, 6 until 5. And maybe if you're retired or, or part, and you're doing this part-time, uh, just say, hey, I, you know, there are days when I work half days. You know, I get in at 6 and I leave at 6. That's half a day, okay? And if you're working part-time, uh, expect part-time income, but don't try to demand full-time income on a part-time hourly basis. Also, Block your major and critical tasks throughout the day first. If there's something that you have to do that is very, very, very big and very, very important, then do that the first thing out of the block. If you're writing blogs or if you're uh, doing social media campaigning, if you're trying to do those kind of things, if those are important to you and your business, make those things go first. Because if you don't make those things go first, you may find that at the end of the day that you don't have enough time left to accomplish those things because the time was misallocated. So knock out those times first. You know what? I went all this time and forgot to put up a color in the background. But anyway, so block out those tasks first. Finally, respect the blocks. You know what? <clears throat> Unless the world is going to end, you know, have that firm shutdown time. Have that firm end time. I, it was funny. Years and years ago, I had uh, a person that I would consider my boss tell me, hey, unless a person's going to die, shut it down. You don't have to be here, this, that, and the other thing. And, um, you know, so he was a great respecter. Even though he was a leader, a manager, he said, hey, someone's not going to die. Don't worry about it. 
So that helped me to really fully understand that I need to respect the blocks when I shut things down, when I start things up, and to live by those sets of rules. Now, um, I don't know, other people, that is kind of a unique thing. You get to pick how you want to do things because you are self-employed as an independent agent. Now, if you can identify with someone that you, uh, that you would like to be a ment mentored by, then ask them how they've modeled their life. Take the best of what you see and follow along behind that. Try to, uh, try to mimic the tasks that they do well. And everybody does, everybody really does tasks well. Now, some people may turn around and they may cringe at this statement, but even Adolf Hitler was a brilliant communication person. Adolf Hitler was great, uh, similar to Obama. He was great. You know, they had similar kind of other characteristics, but they were excellent communicators. Now, philosophically, I do not uh, agree with anything else about them, but boy, if I could only ha be half the communicators that they were, then I would be much, much more uh, amazing in my own business. And um, so mimic the ones that you can. Find the skill set and help to develop that within you. Declare your intention. So very, very important. In the military, we learned this saying. It was called bluff. And uh, basically, it helps to identify the purpose. And what it stands for is bottom line up front. In the beginning, state your purpose. Folks, I'm here to explain to you what life insurance is about. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to give you an overview of how to maximize your retirement dollars. Um, folks, thanks for coming to this uh, uh, meal today. What I'm here to do, and when you walk away, the purpose of this whole thing is to help you open your eyes to the value of what makes an annuity the best tool for retirement. There, you're letting people know right up front what the purpose is. There is no, there is absolutely no doubt, or should be no doubt in anyone's mind that from there it's going to be all downhill. And if anybody has ever had a journalism class or taken anything in the media department area, they write what's called an inverted pyramid. Now, back in the day when journalism used to be actually uh, requires skill, uh, you know, you had to have skills to do it. What they would do is in the first couple of paragraphs of any article in the newspaper, they would write the most important topic. You could read, you could basically in the first five paragraphs know virtually everything that you needed to know about a news story. And then if you wanted to fill in and add color to that article, then you could continue to read. And it was just like an upside down pyramid. Uh, don't get me to, oh, look at that. Oh, I'm, you know, but anyway, don't get me to, to kind of have to draw it out with, uh, in the air, but you understand what a pyramid is upside down. The most important stuff, the most important stuff goes at the beginning. So tell people that. Remember, that's a leftover from my days in the military. I used to be a war fighter, so time was of the essence for us. And when it gets right down to it, in the end, you need to learn how to relax. If you just keep go, 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 I feel some days like I'm a battery okay, and uh, a, a rechargeable battery because there are days that at the end of the day I just when I lay my head down in the pillow, I can almost guarantee that I will be out within about three minutes of hitting the pillow. So when you relax, why not turn off that phone? You know, why put up with those pesky phone calls? Hey, block out that four hours a day for just relaxation time. The time that's the time between midnight and 4 a.m. Relax. Enjoy yourself. Turn off the phone. Maybe you consider taking a date night. If you're married, find someone to go out on a date night with. Okay, enjoy yourself, kick up your heels. Um, also, you can maybe work out, take a little of, uh, of that frustrations out, get your endorphins running, um, or you can even run too along with your endorphins. But the fact of the matter is do something to help you relax. If you run around as a tightly wound up battery, all, uh, like a, a rubber band that's tightly uh, wrapped up all day long, eventually something's gonna snap. 
So make sure that you do something. You can even take a walk. I enjoy it. A lot of time, a lot of time is spent with my wife and myself, and we go out on a walk. I'm not always, uh, it's not always the best time because when I go for a walk with Betty, it has to be not too hot, not too cold, not too windy, not too sunny, um, not too far, not far enough. And uh, but you know, I totally enjoy those things. So hopefully what we've done is kind of explain things. And even if it really gets bad, you can always come on over to our land and you can help us cut down a tree. That's right. You can help us knock down a tree. Those are very important things. I hope throughout this whole presentation, I hope that everything that we said today has helped you to understand that maximizing your time is so very important. There are a number of things that you can do and starting immediately tomorrow, you can actually start those things today. If you've got a couple of hours left in your workday, turn off that phone. Turn off checking the email. Call those, pre you know, when I say turn off the phone, that means don't listen to social media and do those kind of things and go check them on your phone. But make your phone calls. Make your business phone calls. Be about the business of business. And that way, focus on what's important. Ladies and gentlemen, I certainly thank you for watching today's video. Understand that we do record the videos and we place them on our YouTube channel. And we also have a channel that's called The Basic Agent. The Basic Agent is a website or, a, pardon me, a, uh, a, a channel on YouTube that will help you understand some of the tools that, and the things that you did as a new agent that helped you to become successful. Becoming successful at whatever level that you want it to be. And those are things that maybe when you got a little bit more experienced, you put those things aside. And then sometimes when production waned, um, you forgot those basic items. We help brush those things off and maybe get to help you encourage those things and practice them more. And if you like any of our videos, we would, we would ask that you would click the subscribe button. And that would help us as well as clicking the chime, which will help uh, notify you of our posts and on the basic agent it, they uh, they appear Saturday morning so instead of watching the cartoons you can watch this character on your computer screen if you're not part of the apex insurance group team we certainly would enjoy considering and chatting with you sharing with you what we're about we offer numerous ways to get in contact with us one way is you can call us you can send up smoke signals you can even uh, you can even write your name and phone number on a paper airplane and toss it into the air. But we would actually prefer that you would go to our website at apex-ig.com backslash register. You can fill out a form and that form will let us know that we should be giving you a call. We certainly would like that. And finally, don't forget next week, the five best books of your insurance sales career. I tell you what, if you're not reading these books, if you haven't read these books, then uh, I would suspect that you're a mediocre at best producer. And if you have read them, I would suspect that you're in the top 5% of all producers across America. So don't forget to join us next week, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time on the 15th. Is that really right? The 15th? Hmm. I think I got my dates messed up. Well, go check the internet. Anyway, folks, I thank you very much for attending today's webcast and have yourself a great day. We'll see you next week.